I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Denise Burns. Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. Today I have the privilege of having my beautiful daughter with me on the program. And uh, I told her the other day, I said, she, no matter how old she gets, uh, uh, she'll always be daddy's little girl. And yes. uh, she is. <laughs> and she's pretty like her mom, but actually she is... She's more geared like her like her dad. I am. <laughs> Chip off the old block. And then <laughs> and then I've got five grandsons and 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 uh, her youngest Wesley. Uh, he's he, he, one day he told me he said, "Poppy, I'm I'm too much like you or something like that." <laughs> <laughs> he is a lot like you. Yeah, though, he, for he, sure. <laughs> he, he he picked up some of my personality, but he's got his dads too and his mom, so. The kids do that. But uh, we're going to, today on the program, we're going to have a message that she did at Winter Bible Seminar in 21, having deep roots in God. And uh, what, what exactly were you going, what, what were you trying to accomplish when you were talking about having deep roots? You know, when we have deep roots and, you know, we meditate on the word day and night, really yeah. get to know God, yeah. no matter what we're going through, no matter if things are going good, if they're going bad, if it's a difficult time, we stay steady and we stay strong because we know that our trust is in God and the situations of life don't toss us back and forth. Right. Uh, you know, I was just saying, uh, you know, the, it talks about tree planted by the river water, you know, produces yes. fruit. Right. And I was just thinking about the uh, <clears throat> first time I ever was with dad, I was about 15 and we drove to California and you're going across that desert and he was talking because the first time I'd ever been out that far west and uh, he said, see that line of trees over there? He says, uh, there's a stream. There has. There's a stream of water over there, and I said, "Why?" He said, "Because if you look, there's nothing else growing. It's all barren." But said over there, these green. Trees, he said, "Because there's water, and the tree can go, put the roots down and get the water. And so when there's, it's barren everywhere else. Those trees are still there." Producing good fruit. Yes. Yeah, and that's how you know the word of God is for our lives. Um, when it's barren around us because we get our nutrient and our water from God, from the Word of God, through yeah. praying and reading the Word, we can still continue to produce good fruit. Well, we could talk about that for a long time, but why don't we go right now where you are speaking on having deep roots in God. I just want to talk to you about a few things that the Lord has laid on my heart. You know, um, 2020 was an interesting year for a lot of us. Um, you know, there were some really awesome things that happened, but there were a lot of challenging things that happened. So um, I was super happy when 2021 rolled around and uh, real happy to tell 2020 goodbye. Um, and so the cry of my heart for 2021 was, God, this year, I want to see you, I want to hear you, and I want to know you. Amen. I want to see you working in my life. I want to hear your voice clearer than ever. And I want to know you and your heart and your will. And, and that has been my prayer from day one of 2021. And so the Lord brought me to these verses and let's turn there. It's over in Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation this morning, all my scriptures. So Jeremiah 17, let's start with verse 7. It says, But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. 
Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. How many of you can say that 2020 was some, it was long months of drought, you know? Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. I just want to read that again. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. I want to stop right there. You know, if this is saying they have made the Lord their hope and confidence, it means that we have a choice. We can make other things our hope and our confidence. Things that are not stable, things that are like quicksand. But when we make the Lord, when we choose to make the Lord our hope and confidence, that's when we are trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Amen. Amen. Now, this is really interesting to me because, you know, when I'm reading the word and I'm studying the word, I'm just looking at it, I'm dissecting it. I'm a little bit of like an English nerd, like, you know, and I like to like dissect things. I like to look up definitions. And so trees planted along a riverbank. I think this is interesting because, I mean, there's trees planted everywhere. You know, there's trees along the side of the road, there's trees in, you know, your yard, there's trees in a forest. But this specifically says, those that have made the Lord their hope and confidence are like trees planted along a riverbank. And so I'm like, I need to find out why trees are planted along a riverbank because obviously there's some analogy and some imagery here that I need to get. So let me tell you, okay, I'm not a scientist, but you know, I can look up things. Okay, so what's special about trees that are planted by a riverbank those trees, they stabilize the river. They stabilize the river. How do they do that? They're a stabilizing force. They do it by reducing erosion, okay? They block all the like debris and the sediment and all of that from getting into the river. They're a stabilizing force to people and to animals and they recharge the aquifer. You may say, well, what's an aquifer? I didn't know either, so, you know, don't feel bad. Um, The aquifer is an underground layer of water-bearing rock, and so they recharge that, all right? So a tree planted by a riverbank has a specific purpose. It's not just to grow and, you know, look pretty. It has a purpose, just like when we put our hope and our confidence in the Lord, the Lord has a purpose for us in our life, in the path that he has called us to walk into. And one of the purposes is to stabilize those things around us. How many of you want to be a stabilizing force to those around you? To recharge You know, the trees planted by the riverbank, they recharge those around them. They recharge that aquifer. We should be recharging and stabilizing those around us. And that we are, and and also the thing about trees planted by the riverbank. The reason why that these trees are not bothered by heat or by drought, because you know, I've had trees in my yard that when it gets really hot here in Oklahoma, you wouldn't know it right now by the weather, but you know, we're like, you know, in the triple digits sometimes for months in the summer. And it doesn't matter how much that I water my trees, a lot of times those trees are bothered by the heat and they die, okay? And I have to pull them out and, you know, toss them out and replant new ones and that's really expensive. So, um, but the trees, planted by the riverbank, the reason they're not worried about the drought, the heat, no matter how many months it's hot, is because their root system, it is made to go deep. And it goes deep, deep down. 
And when you go deep, deep down by a river, there's a constant supply of water that's just watering those roots and watering those roots. And it doesn't matter what's happening up here, how hot it gets, how many trials we go through, <laughs> no matter what the circumstances look like, those trees, they stay green and never stop producing fruit because see, they're watered by deep down. They're not watered by up here by the rain. What an amazing analogy for us as Christians. When we choose to put our hope and our confidence in the Lord, and when we choose to let our roots go deep and get watered, by the reign of the Holy Spirit, by the refreshing of the word. When we let our roots go deep and we are getting constantly refreshed daily by the word and by the Holy Spirit and by prayer, we're not worried about the circumstances when they happen. We're not worried about what the world around us looks like. We're, we're gonna keep on producing fruit, amen? We're gonna keep on producing fruit. And the thing that's interesting to me about this is that I, I believe that the Lord brought me to the scriptures because if we wanna see God more in our life, if we wanna hear God more clearly, if we wanna know the very heart and the will and the intentions of God, we need to put our hope and our confidence in Him. And we need to let our roots run deep and get watered. But so many Christians that I know of, and I mean, hey, it's hard. I mean, I, I even have issues with this, okay? Is that we get kind of worried about what's going on around us and circumstances in our lives. And it keeps us from producing fruit. But right here, it says when those who, put the, the, those who put their hope and confidence in the Lord, their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. You know what my confession has been since January 1 of 2021? Thank you, Lord, that I never stop producing fruit. I never stop producing fruit. I say that probably about 200 times a day. When I'm tempted to be upset and worried and depressed and look at the circumstances around me and get angry and, you know, just all out of sorts, I say, no, no, no. I never stop producing fruit. I'm not worried. My hope and my trust is in the Lord and I never stop producing fruit. I always produce good fruit. No matter what it looks like around me, no matter how many months of drought, situations, problems come against me, I never stop producing fruit. I never stop producing fruit. You know, you can have what you say. It's about a mindset. The thoughts that you think in your mind they're eventually going to become your words, and your words will become your actions. So if you're thinking, oh, man, I just can't make it. Things are just too tough. It's just too hard. How much more can I stand? Everything's coming against me. The world is against me. Man, my job stinks. Man, I just, you know, I don't have enough money to do what I want to do. Man, I'm just having issues with my kids. Man, my husband is really acting ugly. Or my wife is just really, I don't want to be around her. If you think those things, they're eventually going to become your words and your words will become your actions. It starts with a mindset. It starts with your thoughts. It's taking those thoughts that do not line up with the word of God and bringing them captive to the word of God, to what God says about you, to what God says about your life. Amen? But you know, for me, I am saying in 2021, I always produce good fruit. And you may say, well, Denise, what in the world are you talking about? What fruit are you talking about? Like apples, like lemons, what? Well, let's go over to Galatians 5. Galatians 5. This is the fruit I am talking about. 
Galatians 5. All right, verse 22. All right, how do we produce good fruit? Here it is, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Now, before we talk about those fruit in our lives, let's talk about the Holy Spirit for a minute. All right, there are many, many aspects of the Holy Spirit, right? We've got moves of the Spirit, we've got the infilling of the Spirit, we speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit gives us boldness. But this right here, the Holy Spirit, this is talking about, you know, the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is a person, he's a he, right? Um, and he lives in us, all right? When we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell us and live in us. And you know, if you wanna know more about the person of the Holy Spirit, because that's one thing I love to teach on more than anything, it doesn't matter what I'm talking about, I'm always gonna find a way to talk about the Holy Spirit. You go read over in John chapters 14, 15, and 16, and you find out about the person of the Holy Spirit and all that he does in your life. Right, I cannot function one second of one day without the Holy Spirit on the inside of me because here's the deal. And when you go and study it out, um, I have a CD in, in, in the bookstore about it, but just read John chapter 14, 15, and 16. The Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of you, guess what? He has direct communication with the Father and he only hears and says what the Father tells him. And that lives on the inside of us. We have 24 seven access to the direct throne room of God, to his voice through the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. And he will guide us and he will lead us and he will tell us of things to come and he will remind us of everything that this word says. So you need to tap into that, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, oh, we could stop right there and we could spend several hours, right? Love, love. I see a whole lot of ugliness in our world today. And I'm not just talking about the unsaved, I'm talking about the saved. A whole lot of ugliness, a whole lot of not walking in love. And that's sad because that is the very first fruit that it talks about. And I don't think that that's a coincidence. Love. Love, you know, your faith won't work without love. When you're a step out of love, your faith, your prayers, they're not gonna work. If you've been saying, hey God, I've been praying, I've been standing in faith, but it just seems like, you know, it's not working, check your love walk. What does it look like? I have to do this quite often, you know? Even just this week, I was getting a little cranky, all right? A lot of things going on this week, all right? I got cranky and I had to say, nope. I produce good fruit in my life. I'm gonna walk in love. I'm gonna walk in love. All right, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the types of fruit that should be produced in our life. These adjectives right here, this should describe you. This should describe me. When people think about you, when people think about me, they should say, oh man, Denise is full of love. She's full of joy. She's patient, she's kind. She's faithful, she's good. She's peaceful. Do these adjectives describe you? If your spouse, if your best friend had to describe you, would, would these come to mind? Yikes, you know? I don't know if I wanna know the answer to that. But you know what? When we are putting our hope and our confidence and our trust in the Lord, when we are like that tree planted by the riverbank with our roots that go deep, and y'all, Everybody in here, we've got deep roots, right? This is homecoming. This is winter Bible seminar. 
Many, many of you in here are Rama Bible Training College graduates. Okay, your roots go deep. All right, they go deep. And you should be producing always good fruit in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right, let's turn over to another scripture. Let's go over to Psalms. Okay, see this tree by the riverbank thing, there's something to it. Because it talks about it again over here in Psalms. Chapter one, we're going to Psalms one. We're gonna start in verse two. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. It's the word of God, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. Okay, see, here it is again. And I'm like, if it's twice in the Bible, specifically talking about trees and the riverbank and bearing fruit and never withering, we need to pay attention to that. We need to get into that. You know, meditating on the word day and night, you know, that is how that we're constantly putting our hope and our trust and our confidence in the Lord. It's meditating on this day and night, meditating. And so meditating on this, I have been more purposeful in just reading the word to let God minister to me. You know what else I'm guilty of a lot? When I'm going through a situation, I'm like, oh, I need to find a scripture for that. And not that that's bad, we need to, we need to stand on scriptures. But if that's all we're doing and we're never just letting God talk to us about what he wants to talk to us about, that's where the problem comes in. Turn over to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy. Let's read this over here. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. There's a lot in those couple of scriptures right there, you know? And so, you know, the Lord uses his word to teach us and to show us and correct us. Well, I sure hope that you enjoyed that and that it ministered to you. And we have some offers that we want to talk about. Well, yeah, we, we? We, got, we got the bag, yes. the hey, faith bag. We have a faith bag. Now, let me tell you, um, my mom loves bags, and I do too. She passed that right along to me. So this is our faith bag. And inside, we have a lot of great products for a gift of $140 and more, or more. And one thing that we have is um, the Legacy Bible. This is my grandfather's uh, legacy Bible. It has 26 lessons of notes from him um, on faith and it'll just really bless you. And it is actually a beautiful Bible. It is genuine leather and um, it is just gorgeous. It would make a great gift for yourself or for somebody else. But also in there, we've got some CDs. We've got my dad's CD, How to Grow in Love. Yep. Um, we've got my mom's CD, The Lord Our Peace, uh, my brother, Craig's CD, Healing Belongs to You, and my CD, New Seasons. Um, so all of that just for a gift of $140 or more. Yeah, and you know, speaking of the Bible there, uh, nobody, in fact, when we were trying to get this, nobody said, they said, nobody, we don't do genuine leather anymore, but we, we kept going till we found genuine leather and it's a great Bible yes. and it has those original 26 lessons 
that was in the original faith Bible that we had back in the 70s. And, and so, so many people wanted it that we, 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 we brought it back, <laughs> okay? So wonderful. And we've got some living faith crusades coming up. My mom and dad will be holding crusades in Lake Worth, Florida, January 23rd through the 25th at Believer's Victory Church, Pastor Scott and Peggy Heald. And so and you can go to rhema.org for the service times. Yeah, and I'm gonna, we're going to jump over then on Wednesday through Friday, uh, the 26th through the 28th of January to Anchor Faith Church with uh, Pastors Earl and Marcy Glisson. And now we, Lynette and I, are going to stay over and be there on Sunday morning for a special celebration service with them because they have purchased the property where they're at now. It's going to be a great time. Come on down and be with us, okay? Hey, what's coming up there in, in the middle of February? Winter Bible Seminar. It's worldwide homecoming this year. Yep, and we got services start 6 p.m. on Sunday and then Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m., uh, 9.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and then 7 p.m. at night, Monday through Friday. And like she said, if you want to know anything about it, just go to rhema.org. In fact, if you want to know anything about Kenneth Hagin Ministries, just go to rhema.org and you can, you can, you can get... Uh, all kinds of, you can get live stream stuff that we do. You can get the Word of Faith magazine. You can download right. it or read it online. Yes, and if you love to listen to podcasts, um, actually my brother has a great podcast, the Rama Weekly Podcast. Yes. And you can find that at rama.org or anywhere that you find podcasts. So check that out. It's a great podcast to listen to weekly. Well, we want to thank y'all for joining with us th this week. And we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, the, to the, world. the world. Start off your new year with our spiritual preparation for 2022 package. It is a powerful package of four CDs and a legacy Bible featuring the luxurious Kenneth E. Hagen legacy Bible bound in genuine leather that contains 26 lessons on faith plus an essential CD by Craig W. Hagen and Denise Hagen Burns teaches about new seasons. Also an anointed CD with Lynette Hagen. Finally, how to grow in love by Kenneth W. Hagen. As a bonus, we will also include a copy of the Word of Faith magazine to encourage and build up your faith. This entire package, including the limited edition leather Bible and the Word of Faith magazine can be yours today for a gift of only $140 or more. Just call toll free right now, 888-PRAISE-8, or you can log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.